Hello, people out there, and welcome back to Fat Lads Going Gold. We're back, like we say, we'll be back. Now, I'm your host, and fat, I'll be the God Complex, Mark Watson. And in my bottom right hand corner tonight, I've never been here before, didn't know where to go, never met you before, I've never been to your home. That smell's not unknown, footsteps made of stone, but walking feels familiar. You can do all the things that you like to do, all around, underground, nick a part that's new. You can do all the things that you like to do, all around, upside down, nick a part that's new with Nick Totty. Hello. How you doing? I'm very well. How are you? Not too bad, mate. Do you recognise the song or not? No, I have no idea. Fuck oh, sake, Sam, do you recognise the song or not? Sorry, no. Pick a part that's new by the Stereophonics. Welsh band, you might have heard of them. Only one of the best bands ever. No, nothing right. I, I've, I've heard the Stereophonics, but <laughs> don't know the song. Oh, well, it's one of their early ones. And in my bottom <laughs> left-hand corner tonight. I sam what I sam. I sam my own creation. So come take a look. Give me the hook of the ovation. It's my world that I want to have a little pride in. My world and it's not a place I have to hide in. Life's not worth a sam. Till you can say, I sam what I sam with Sam Holtham. Fantastic. Absolutely yeah. wonderful. Do you recognise that one? Yeah. Is it I can tell you what it's called, me to, to start with. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know what it's called, who it was sung by, but it's just a familiar song, isn't it? You'll be shocked to learn it's called I Am What I Am. Oh, I, oh, I, thought, I thought it was called I Sam What I Sam. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sounds like it should be. By Gloria Gaynor. Oh, people. wow. It, it, Gloria okay. Gaynor is one of those artists that, like, you know, but I never thought I could name a song of. Now, I Sam What I Sam. The whole there world. You go. Trivia yeah. question. Trivia question. Yeah. <laughs> Next time that comes up, what was the <laughs> song <laughs> Sam was used to be introduced by? Yeah. Anyway, we're back. Just like we said, we're back. We've got a show of one half as we now do. The first half about blues. It always is. Second half doesn't exist anymore. Before we get into all of that, please do check out Back to the Pitching podcast. Uh, Shannon went on a bit of a rant this week about the Blues Player Awards. She was not a happy chappy, to say the least. Uh, and I was a bit worried that it might upset the club, but we released it anyway. So, Shannon, it, it's all on her shoulders. She, yeah, she wasn't happy with the, the treatment of some of the, the women's players, unfortunately. Um, so please do check that out. Uh, other than that, let's just crack on with it. Let's punch Nick in the dick to tickle the algorithm, but let's crack on with the Blues. Nick, we're down. We are. It's happened. Are, it's game over. It's, it's the end of the um, world as we know it. It is. It is definitely the end of blues as we know it. I think. Um, uh, are you? Are you in the in the dirt? Are you gutted? Is it the end? Are you thinking of going out and buying a Clarison blue shirt? I, and a, a lot of people might disagree with this, but I feel um, a sort of strange excitement about the sort of reset button that we're inevitably going to hit very quickly um i think that whilst obviously i would have never wished for us to get relegated i think we would have limped into next season with a few more of the stragglers that we still have um and i think that this might just force those out of the door a little bit quicker and sort of look to build a squad that that we can develop over the next few years that can get us where we want to get to were you angry at the end of the Norwich game when it happened? I was furious. Yeah. Really? How long was... did anger last? Like, is that still in you now? Or? Uh, okay, so just because I know that most of them are going. But, right. I, you know, I, I did join in with the booze at the final whistle. And I did join in chanting, um, you're not fit to wear the shirt when, when that came up. Mm. Um. Just because, you know, it's been so many years of, you know, half assed effort trying to continually just limp over the line and survive on the final day. And to be quite honest with you, the group of players, the squad that we've had this year, they deserve a relegation on their CV. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Fucking absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. This, in my opinion, and the opinion of of others, uh, oh, there's only so much I can say. Um, this squad have are, in my opinion, and only my opinion, and not influenced by anything else ever. Honest, uh, very unprofessional. Uh, yeah. Didn't have the fight in them. Uh, didn't conduct themselves in the way that us as Blues fans would like them to conduct themselves, and former players and coaches and stuff would expect 
players to conduct themselves. I don't think they put the shift in when was needed. I don't think they responded to either aggression, abuse or cuddling. I don't think any tactic worked with them. I think over the six managers, we can see that. And there will be people that say, oh, yeah, but under good managers, they did all right. Yeah, they did all right, I suppose. You know what? If you had the option, Sam, of keeping Eustace and doing all right for a season and staying up and keeping these players, or it all goes to shit, we get relegated, but these players bugger off, what are you choosing? Relegation. Um, yeah. I think the, the one thing that I've been thinking ever since it happened, um, once it became a reality, really, because I've, I've been okay with the whole thing, to be honest, because I've, I've seen it coming for weeks. I think I said it on the last part. Um, for me, what what has to happen in these sorts of situations is there has to be uh, a defining point in which it has to change. I think every season, if you, I think the, the common phrase is circle the plug hole. Mm -hmm. You're going to get to the end of that season. You're not going to learn anything. You're going to go into the next one thinking, oh, we got away with it. We bring a few more players in, you know, just increase the quality in our squad a little bit more and we'll mm -hmm. get a bit higher up the league because in theory, that's what should happen. But that's not what happens because we've said it so many times. The new players come in. They look at the habits of the old players. They realise they don't have to continue putting in 110%. And then just periodically, every season after Christmas, we just start to tumble down the division again and we learn nothing and we do it again the next season. We probably change a manager in the process. We do it again the next season. There's no choice now but to have to learn from it. We are in a position where we've not 100%. been before for a long time. So... 100%. Perfect opportunity, like Nick says, to reset. I think the majority of fans that you see and hear off are also excited. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the biggest telling factor for me was walking out the ground at the end of that game. I, I was more angry at the end of the um, the Cardiff game, the Middlesbrough game, games like mm. I was at the Norwich game, because at least in that game, they actually put a performance together. Yeah. So it was a really sort of conflicting feeling at the end of the game. So I, st I stayed around to sort of, I only wanted to cheer off Duke and Stansfield, if I'm honest. Yeah. yeah. I didn't I didn't pay any acknowledgement to the rest of them. Duke came out first, he got a good applause, mm. and went completely silent when the rest of them came out. Not did they all come back out the tunnel for their yeah. little special lap of one of them. Yeah, the yeah. Well, so Duke came out first and got a got a good sort of reception. There's a few yeah. tears in his eyes with his family and all that. That was a nice moment. I think they purposely left about a 40 yard gap between him really and rest of, yeah and the rest of the players who then came out and like i say you could hear a pin drop really? completely silent and then stansfield was the last one and it all picked oh. up again so it was noticeable from the mm. fans i say i think if it, if you'd have lost that game <clears throat> and the other results had gone against us i think there would have been more booze but i think it was complicated because we'd won and yeah. you've already done everything we needed to in that particular game and still gone down you know that that's the one bit that threw me a little bit. I, I didn't expect us to stay up, but mm. I couldn't see a situation where we would win and all of the others would win as well. <laughs> so it was yeah. a bit of a, it was a really strange feeling. But as I say, walking out the ground at the end of it, nobody's in tears, nobody's angry, nobody's mm. upset. Everyone's just going, mm. "Well, we knew that was coming. Like we've expected it." Yeah, and I think it's the same mentality that the players have had, and I, that's the problem. So if you if you can weed those out, get rid of the majority if not all of the players that middle group that start walk again out. yeah basically yeah basically <laughs> yeah. that is it as if they um, made them walk out in a literal shit sandwich i'm not sure how how i feel about the uh, the pitch invasion at the end of the relegation oh. <laughs> do you know, do you know what for me. <laughs> yeah when they first ran on it was mostly kids that ran it on was, and i thought yeah. well the kids are going to do it fair enough and then when the adults come on i was like really well, i was in the yeah. Gilmerick lower and there were people clapping the players off at the end of the game. I was like, what the yeah. fuck are you doing? You're clapping these spineless dicks. What? I understand waiting for Duke and giving him his special clap to mm. clap these lot after they've done nothing, put no effort in all season. And that'll upset people. I don't care. The, the, the lack of drive and commitment and desire this season, you're going to clap them off. We've been relegated. We've booed teams off before after surviving. You're going to what clap I, also as well, I think 
one of, if not the highlight of my season. And it's a good job that the player awards weren't a week later because the goal of the season would have gone to the supporter who hit it in <laughs> about 40 <laughs> yards on the pitch invasion. One of the best <laughs> goals I've ever seen at St Andrews. Top bins, absolutely incredible. I was, was halfway was to highlight. halfway to Baines's. I was talking to, to Jack outside, actually. Um, and we heard this massive cheer. And I naturally <laughs> thought, oh, right, a steward's chipped a player, uh, like a fan up or something, or the fans broke through. Saw on the internet, fuck me, I missed gold Brilliant. of the season. Here. <laughs> yeah, absolute world, eh? That's why you never leave early, folks. Yeah. Stay to the end. <laughs> Be the last one out of the ground. <laughs> you never know when a fan's going to score a screamer <laughs> in the death. <laughs> But no, I, like, I, some of the stuff I heard walking back to town, like um, I heard someone say, uh, there's no way Rowers will stay with us now. He's too good for League One. Is he? Is he too good for League One? Is he? Like, he's, not, right. he's, he's not the one. He's not the manager that I want if, if Mordred no, doesn't. No, I, I don't. Well, I mean, I mean that, that's that's the question, Nick. Do, do you think he gets a look in now? Do you, do you think they're considering it? I mean, I. I've tried to look at this from both sides and I've tried to look at this from the side of Tom Wagner on the board and I've also tried to look at it from the side of Gary Rowett and I can't help but feel like Gary Rowett might have just sort of slipped Tom Wagner's phone number just on his way out but I also because I can't help but feel like Gary Rowett's been around and seen how the club's transformed in such a short period of time since when he was last here and I don't know how anybody can come into the building and not feel like they want to be a part of that. Mm. But I also feel like, you know, the board has been so big on putting a focus into the style of football that they want us to play. I think that if they were to appoint Rowett, it wouldn't support the ambition that they're putting out in the communication to the rest of the club. I think... If we'd have stayed in the championship and Tony Mowbray wasn't to return, then I think Gary Rowett would probably be in with a very good shout of coming back. God, but I, I think, hope not. But I think the fact that we've gone down, we really we've got to we've got to be going into next season saying we've got to win the fucking lot. That's and, why. I, that's why I don't want Rowett. I want someone who's going to no. come to League One, grab the ball by the horns. Be really fucking arrogant about it. Try and smash every team out the park, and like Rowie two will come. And yeah. even in League One, where we should be um, the favourites, defend, defend, defend. Hope for a counter attack. Win one nil. Yay! If we're I going want, down, let's have fun down here. I don't want to pay thirty-five pounds for an away ticket to watch Blues at Cambridge to score one goal and then put ten men behind the ball and Absolutely. watch Cambridge hammer us with shots and crosses. I want to go there. And put five past Cambridge and say thanks very much for the three points. I want to six embarrass months. them. How much opportunity as a Blues fan, Sam, do you get to embarrass a team and actually go there and, and swing it? Like on the day after we got relegated on social media, we're winding up all the League One fans, <laughs> telling we're going to smash them. We don't really believe it, but that's what Blues do. Telling, us, telling everybody that we've paid five million to have ownership of Oxford, you know, <laughs> yeah. Oxford, turn it into a TK Max fuck them. Like, <laughs> Someone actually said that to me yesterday. They said, you, so you've bought Oxford. I was like, come on, surely you haven't fallen for that. Do, do you remember the whole um, the whole Birmingham Legion thing and the shit on the Memphis thing that went through Twitter when we started that rivalry? It's going to be that again, but yeah. every week with a new League One team who don't get Brummy sense of humour. Mm. I want that. Bring that on. And it might we might go like tits up, and we might be the next Sunderland. But I don't know, Sam. I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling confident, and even though we haven't got the squad in place yet, I still feel like if this war chest comes, it should be a bit of a, a piss about. Yeah, and. A similar thing with Rowett. I mean, we, we brought him in to try and do a job. Uh, it's it's a little bit... I think the board have contradicted themselves a couple of times with their appointments now. I mean, they brought Rooney in because they had a certain style that they wanted to implement and they wanted to be attacking, dare I say it, no fear, and they wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. we, we tried to, in January, build a, a squad of players. Well, I say build a squad. Can you say that with three additions? But yeah. we brought in players that fitted that style of play in theory, you know, having the ball, playing nice football, taking it forward quicker, um, going through the middle. And then because we're sort of panicking and it's not worked out with obviously Mowbray's illness and then it's not worked out with Venus at all. And they've just looked at who's available, who has a track record of keeping teams in the division. I don't think they really looked at 
who's got a record of keeping teams in the division and also players in the way that we're trying to play. They've brought in somebody like Rowett and gone, well, he's done quite well. Mm. Forgetting that Rowett normally likes to have two giant centre-halves, a giant centre-forward yeah. and two centre-midfielders that will battle everything. And you could argue they're all things that we don't have at the minute. So I, I just wonder whether that was a little bit of a knee-jerk sort of, oh, he's, he's kept teams up before, let's just give it a go, what can we lose? Um, and I know hindsight's a great thing, and he's not done a bad job. He's he made us more solid, and he we didn't lose as many games, we didn't concede as many goals. But it was just again the, the same thing that everybody's saying. The Rotherham and Huddersfield was just that great opportunity to showcase that that's not what you are as a manager, yeah. and that yeah. you can yeah. find a way to score a load of goals. Yeah. And he just did what everybody expected him to do, and just yeah. tried not to lose. And that that's exactly why he he wouldn't be. And I think he probably still sees himself as a championship manager as well. I don't think he would mm. see himself in League One. No, I, I think um, he was um, before coming to us. Rumor has it he was touting himself around League One clubs, trying to pick a job up. Oh, okay. That's, that's what oh, I've heard. Well. That's what I've heard. Whether that's true, I don't know. I don't live with him, um, but that's what I've heard. I don't. I don't think Rowett. I don't think Rowett particularly made many mistakes no. when he came in i think he did what he did the job that you would only expect him to do the yeah, only yeah. Re, the only real mistake he made was starting all his fucking book <laughs> his mistake was being gary rowitt and that's our mistake for signing gary rowitt. that's what rowitt does isn't it that, that's what yeah. he does he, he def defends and defends yeah. and oh i got a counter but it was very um very similar to eustace against was it norwich after they got battered yeah and then we went and and shied away from them like, no, yeah. this team on the back foot, let's, let's fucking have them. Rotherham are down, let's have them. I just feel yeah. like thinking that battle, spell, weren't they? they yeah. I think that we were the only team that they'd played in eight or nine games and, and managed to get a win as well, Norwich, at that point, because they were in a really bad run, weren't they? Yeah, at the start yeah, of the season. Yeah. yeah, they were getting battered, and but not us. We like, if you want a bad run, there's one team you want to play, it's Birmingham yeah. fucking City, isn't it? Like, we, we will help you out. It's felt like that's been the case for years, you know, yeah. no matter what. You you look at you look at fixtures and you go oh brilliant we're playing this team or that team and they've not won in five they've not won in six and then they always turn us over but everybody else seems yeah. to take advantage of it yeah 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 that that is I mean that comes back to culture of the club again doesn't it which yeah Pew has banged on about for since the dawn of time and he will do when he comes back off his holidays in Spain um it's the culture of the club it the culture needs to change and in league one it has to change it yeah. absolutely has to the i mean the list of players out of contract anyway is, is long enough the list of players we're going to sell is hopefully even longer um what sort of players though sam do we get in because league one is a different animal league one yeah. is, is tougher it's grittier and the, i don't think there's anyone in our squad at the moment that has that in them so we, we've got to do some major shifting around yeah and it's a it's a balancing act as well because and i've been guilty of saying it probably even last week when we were talking about it and saying that i would happily get rid of everybody and start a complete fresh problem with that is if you then go ahead and bring in a load of early 20s points to prove hungry players that have been sort of in and around the lower divisions for a bit you could find yourself in a situation with absolutely nobody that's got any experience of getting to the championship or playing in the championship so then you've got to do a whole new restart if you get promoted so mm. i'm i'm starting to come around to the idea and, and i don't for a minute expect any of these players to start and feature regularly but just to have mm. experienced heads players that you can see as or have been leaders in the past the likes of i'd, I'd still probably try and get duke in front of the year even if it's just for five minutes if it's not going to plan at the end and you just need to throw it up Gary Gardner is a funny one. one. Yeah, Gary Gardner is <laughs> a funny one. I've I've listened and read a few things about him recently, and I think because he's hardly played for a couple of years, he's fallen into the the camp of overplayed or sorry overpaid, sitting on the bench, never sort of gets a minute, waste of budget, get rid. I think if you can in, encourage him to come in on relatively low terms, I could see him. And I think by all accounts, he's been quite a positive influence in the dressing room. So oh. again, if you're going to uh, Gary Gardner. If you're going to bring in a whole new squad of players it might be quite useful to have people like that around with um, um with with gary gardner um and again this is another i sometimes forget what people tell me and then say don't tell anyone though so fuck it, i'm going to say it anyway and see if i get in trouble um he had as far as i'm aware and i could be wrong he had a clause in his contract 
that would mean that he would get paid X amount for X amount of appearances. Right. That he waived to help the club out. So I'm told. It, 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 I, I've probably butchered that, but there is something in his contract that he waived to help the club out. Right. Um, wow. There you go. So or, that... or, or it could have been paying X amount would have triggered an extension on his contract. And he's waived that. There is something that he's done to help the club out. So, but I like, I'm, I'm the guy that's really biggest fan of as well. So yeah, I, I've got Gary and Craig tattooed on my back, so I, I'm biased, <laughs> but but it's players <laughs> like that. And I mean, even if you if you were to sort of look at all of the players this season of of who's been there's not really been many that have been good just because of where we've finished. If you, you could look at them having spells where they've been good, but for a whole season, there's not really anybody that's been good. So then the next best is sort of who's had an okay season. Yeah. And yeah. then I'm looking at people like John Ruddy and I'm saying, you know what? He's actually had an okay season. He had that. Oh, spell. Sam. No, he oh, has. Sam. He had that How many spell. screens do we want to give away next season? No, I get that. But it, I think when you, if you look at how he was last season, I was thinking to myself, after we've had people like Lee Camp, for example, um, and goalkeepers of that ilk, that somebody that's actually solid and commanding and stuff like that. So it was a good feeling last season with him. I'm not saying I want him to start as number one. I still think we absolutely need to go out and buy a number one that we can use for the future. You know, a relatively young goalkeeper, if, if there's one out there that we can poach. Um, and have him again experienced head he's been through promotions he's been at various teams he's seen all sorts of different changes worked under so many different managers and so on and so forth just an experienced mind in the changing room on the training pitch you know mm -hmm. just being able to help these younger players to <laughs> get up to where he was because let's not forget i know he didn't play that often but he was at one stage a premier league goalkeeper yeah we haven't yeah, had many yeah, of those take that away from him no so i just think no, i'm not saying that i want him and Gary Gardner and Duke to be the first three names on the team sheet next season. That's absolutely not what I want. And I, I wouldn't even be too upset to not see them all that often, but I just think it would be good to have them around still. After that, I'm open to anything. I think there's got to be players out there that are sort of coming out of contract. Um, some that are already in League One that I've had my eye on, but then if we've seen them, so is everybody else. else. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You know, there might well be better options <laughs> for them. The only thing I will say is everybody always goes on about the project and it's been labelled all season about us having the project. And I genuinely do believe it's an exciting one. And I feel like if maybe with my blues hat on a little bit, I'm trying to be a little bit unbiased, but say, for example, you've got the option of going to, say, Plymouth next season, who let's be honest, they're going to be fighting relegation again because they are relatively small compared to who else is in that division. Mm. Or you've got the opportunity to drop, stay in League One or drop down to League One, go to a yeah. team that's potentially going to try and get promoted within maybe a year or two, and their vision is to, to get to the Premier League. I'm, I'm wondering whether that might still be slightly more appealing. If the numbers match, you know, because we're going to be able to offer relatively good contracts as long as we don't fall into the trap that we've done in the past of overpaying. You know, play it safe, but be competitive in the market. I still think we can compete with half of the teams in the championship, even though we're in League One. Um, and it's just such a good opportunity for a relative. You know, I'm, I'm not asking for 18, 19 year old wonder kids to suddenly walk through the door. I'm <laughs> saying sort of 25 or less. There's, there's got to be some players out there that can be attracted to, to what's going on. Um, but who they are and where they come from is is a whole other thing because it's the same market that everybody else is looking in. Um, so that that leads me nicely on to a, a comment we've had. It's almost like you read me notes, Sam. I'm I'm, <laughs> in, I'm impressed with, with simpatico that is uh, from Rob Smith on Twitter uh, at underscore underscore Rob Smith. Uh, it, Hi, Mark. I have a comment for the podcast if there's an episode this week. Of course, there's an episode this week. After having the weekend to truly see the sorrows over Joyce. This has been lingering for 10 years, and how many of them have been survival days? I've read we've had the most losses in the league since 2019, and it was about time to stop relying on other results and accept it. We have nine plus players out of contract, and to be honest, good riddance. Some of the dead wood have been along about uh, sorry, been around too long and fit the perfect lower level championship player. If I was Wagner, I'd reevaluate the board. Will he be the man of, of his word and invest? We know the profit and sustainability rules aren't as severe in lower leagues. Brackets look at Wrexham. Uh, I'd really keep Hall, Donovan, and JJ if we can let the young players give it a go and truly start fresh. Who knows with the Mowbray situation, which, which clearly isn't good, get a young front footed manager and the feeling of winning games yet again. So, 
next season. We have been, had it hinted to us. We've had it explicitly told to us pretty much this, this war chest that should be coming <clears throat> and these players we got to target. Now, to, to plug in, because he's my mate, Ivory is doing a whole article on profit and sus sustainability uh, in League One. So please do look out for that. Knowing Ivory, that'll probably be out before this episode is out because he is a machine when he hits his typewriter. Um, but we are going to have to shop for players with the intention of bouncing straight back to the championship. We need to look for players who are basically championship quality, but willing to play a season in League One. Yeah. Put something in the contract that says you get promoted, your wages double, whatever it is. But you're, you've got to be willing to lower yourself. I think that is the spark this club needs because yeah. the type of bloke who's going to accept that contract is a type of bloke who believes in the project and he's going to put his body on the line. Maybe he's a mercenary and he's after the money for after promotion. Mm. But that is a bloke who looks at the project and goes, you know what? Fantastic stadium. If I can just hold on, if I can keep yeah. my career, if I can be the Duke that's still here seven years later, if I can hold on, I could be playing in a 60,000 seater stadium. Yeah. Potentially going for playoffs, potentially going for the Premier League. If anyone's looking at us and going, Birmingham City just been relegated League One, not interested, fuck off, I'm better than that. Good, don't come, don't want you, yeah. piss off, yeah. not interested. Give me those championship players who know their worth, but also recognise Birmingham City Football Club's worth and are willing to drop down and take us back where we need to be. Yeah, a bit of ambition. Yeah. Absolutely. This could be the moment we've needed to dig out these ambitious players. We tried to go for skillful players that all had massive asterisks next to the name. Buchanan's fantastic, a little bit injured. Buchan uh, Bakuna's fantastic, a little bit inconsistent. We can fuck off bit. the asterisks now. There's two asterisks next to that. <laughs> <laughs> Terms and conditions at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. We can forget these asterisks and we can just go, where is your head at? Because this season, no one's head's where it's needed to be, other than the fans, other than Wagner. Mm. No one else's head's where it was where it needs to be. Where is your mentality? Where do you want to be? Fuck this season in League One. Where do you want to be in four years' time? Yeah. And if the answer isn't, fighting for the playoffs in the Championship or in the Premier League already with Birmingham City, don't even look at the club. I'm not interested. I've had too many of these softer strike players. I'm not interested. You're here to fight or you piss off somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Thoughts, yeah, Nick? Yeah. No, I think <clears throat> you're spot on and I think Sam was spot on about um, some of the players that potentially we look at keeping. Um, we have to, we have to build a squad, and I, I hate to, I hate to use them as a comparison because they're, a, they're a, a small club really, and um, we're we're far bigger than that. But you look at you look at what Ipswich did, and they built they built that squad in League One. You know, realistically, with a couple, <clears throat> one or two that came in, nothing's really changed. But what they did was, you know, with the manager that they had, and they brought in the players that fit the system, and they had time to bring it all together. And they stayed together and they just showed it. What they proved to everybody else in the league was that it worked because they're not changing the team all of the time. And we can't we can't be offering people one year deals on the hope of saying, well, we'll give you another deal if you get us promoted. Exactly mm. what you just said. You know, let's offer some incentives, you know, whether that is a wage increase if we get promoted or whether it's a juicy bonus or whatever it might be. But <clears throat> we've got to find the biggest issue we've had with the players that we've signed for the last seven, eight, nine years is it's character. And yeah. that's what we've missed for so long. Yeah. And especially this season, you know, this season, technically, we've had a better squad of players as footballers than we've had in the last 10 years. Yeah. But we've had less character in this squad than we've had in the last 10 years yeah and at the end of the day that was what that was what sent us down really because the players despite how good they are you know if they don't want to turn up and do it every week then you're not going to get the results and i think having those players like you mentioned duke roddy i, I mean i can see the argument for gary gardner i i certainly wouldn't be having them in and around the start in 11 but they they are probably great heads to have in the dressing room and you need some people that know the club a little bit you know give duke a bit of a player coach role whatever you want yeah. to do so that he's in and around the place but you've you've got to find the balance i look at players like george hall and 
Alfie Chang, if he comes back from his injury, as we all hope he will. And, you know, even players that have been totally left out, like Longello. You know, these are players that you can offer up and offer up and say, look, if you want the minutes, they're going to be there and they're probably good enough for the league. Yeah. And so you've, you've already got the start of a combination of some youth, young players that have got a bit of drive and a bit of ambition and a bit of ability. And also some old heads around there that can say, you know, this is what this is what the fans expect. This is what the club is. This is what we need to go out and do. And then bring in 15, 16 players if you need to. But we, we've got to have that core. And I mean, there's no two ways about it. If if we don't get the players with the right attitude, then we could we could really see all of our momentum um, start to fade off. We've really got to, we've really got to get this right. It's probably the most important summer window we've had in in 10 years yeah yeah I, I would i'd bring in 15 or 16 fans at the start of the season but maybe not like psycho terry or whatever to come and like control <laughs> through the wall but people who can articulate themselves and just to explain to this new lot this is this is what we've had for 10 years explain what the last 10 years have been about and explain what we want the next 10 years to be about and show them like this is the time to this is a proper reset <clears throat> we thought the reset was when night came in initially no this is the reset and it, even if the players come on just looking at the Brucey bonus, if they get promoted, sound at least they back themselves to get promoted. It, it's just it's getting that that core of of yeah. mentally strong characters led by a mentally strong manager, whoever that may be. Hopefully Mowbray, but if it's going to be detrimental at all to his health, hopefully not Mowbray. Mm. Um, just just someone who believes like like we believe. Get Wagner to talk to him. I've said it before, I say it a million times. Wagner can tell me I've got a terminal illness and I'll be sound with it. It's just someone who can give you, <laughs> just uplift you and raise you to the fucking stars. Yeah. I think one of the, I've, I've got a bugbear of throughout the pyramid of football, not just with Blues, but we've, we've been highlighted for this over the last five, six seasons of players that have, they know where they're at, they know what they can achieve. And if they start to earn a certain level of income, I think they they not well yeah down tools a lot of them do they get to a point and they think i don't think it's going to get any better than this i'm signed up for four years this is sweet like i'm going to be in my 30s when it ends i might not play after that i'm, I'm thinking of like hogan etheridge not so much sunnich but players like that that have been earning these mega bucks for four or five years and have got to the last two or three years and done absolutely nothing because what like they don't need to they're going to see yeah, out their contract and at the themselves. end of it they'll either go and find somewhere else that might just pay them 50 quid a, a game or they'll just retire and and that's just where they're at and this is the problem that we've had with the ownership model that we've had in the past of just going well, we want this player and he's told us this is how much he wants so we're going to pay him yeah rather done. than yeah. what we're doing now by saying okay well this is what we've got this is what we can afford if we need to bring in 10 players this is how much we can pay this player per week mm. and if they want then brilliant if they don't then they can go somewhere else you know and we haven't done that in the past we've panicked we've scott hogan is, is a prime example i don't think we wanted scott hogan and i think when we he came in on loan and he had that purple patch where he scored whatever it was seven and eight and something daft yeah and then covid and then everybody tailed off and then we decided to tell pep Plutet that he wasn't sticking around and then we just nosedived in that summer then don't sign him permanently don't get towards the end mm -hmm. of the window and think oh we still haven't signed a striker who's available oh villa have said we can have hogan for three million and we can pay him 25 grand a week he already knows years. where the training ground is like that yeah, yeah it's just like yeah i understand why <laughs> you might have looked at the stats for that first quarter of a season, mm. first of the season and gone god look at all the goals he scored but in reality you just you need to look a little bit further back and go oh actually that was a great little spell but look at the all the other spells he's not had in between and it's it's things like that but this is naive ownership with people that weren't interested in football and we were just a very small cog of what they were trying to do this yeah. feeling is different just purely by what they're talking about and the, the money that they're planning to put in on the infrastructure in the city let alone the club just shows that these guys know what they're doing in terms of business so they're not going to make they're not going to make every decision correctly like we've seen this season with bringing in Rooney and maybe the recruitment in January and all those things, but they're bound to make mistakes. But generally speaking, they're going to make good decisions. They're going to make the club money and that you need to make money to be able to spend money. It's, it's a really yeah. straight thing that 
some people can't grasp. So things like contracts, they're going to make sensible decisions and hopefully they'll be the right players. There'll be some that come in that don't hit the ground and they end up being rubbish, but that's fine. As long as there's a dozen maybe that come in and you can say it was worth, worth taking a gamble on them. We'll be happy yeah, with yeah. that. Yeah. Get, get them in, get them on trials or whatever, put them through the paces and then put them through the paces again and go, right, what yeah. else you got? So Nick and I played um, in that Alliance Cup last night um we came third i can't remember where nick's team came um <laughs> piss up oh mate <laughs> honestly the trophy sam, tattoo on his arm sam, they took it so seriously it was ridiculous <laughs> i was pissing about i was clapping the crowd off when i went off as a sub these lot champions league final they were playing it was ridiculous but anyway <laughs> five minutes in i'm blown out my ass i'm knackered because I'm, I'm unfit and i'm useless and i just want to get off the pitch Mentally, so you I didn't have it. started waving at the fans. I, mate, I did. I gave it the Ethan there. That's what the rest of them do, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I thought I've got to do it once. <laughs> You've just described half the squad this season. There. <laughs> the only thing I regret is I fouled someone, gave away a free kick, and I didn't lie down behind the wall. And I think that's a missed opportunity. I could have done that. Don't get to do that often. But that, that five minutes, I'm blowing my guts out. And I was off. I'm like, right, sub me off. I don't have it up there to carry on. So let's find the players that do. Let's put them through their paces in a trial. Let's knack them the fuck out and go, right, what else you got left? Yeah. Now go and do a bleak test. And let's see who's got it up there. And let's see who goes, now. Nah, blow this. Let's see who's going to rise up to the challenge. Yeah. And that's what we need. I think we've got skillful players. I think the players that we will hold on to are skillfully enough. Those that have got longer contracts. I actually think Tyler Roberts is a skillful player, although he can't yeah. score. Maybe he's pissing light. But <laughs> I, I think he could. I think he's a potentially yeah. a confidence thing for him he, i think if we surround those players one could be perfect for him yeah potentially yeah if we can surround those players with brick wall run through us that's a new phrase i've made up um then fantastic i mean when uh monk came in uh he decided stockdale wasn't that guy for him uh he actually banned stockdale from the the dressing room he had a, he had an email that said you are now no longer welcome in, in the home dressing room um i know that because he told me that um there do do the same find out who there now hasn't got it mentally and if you, you know what if you have to get him away from the squad just bomb them out out to fucking get them out of epic put them in more stills get them out of get these toxic yeah. characters out of the way and just go right this is the project now this is moneyball this is billy bean with the the oakland a's this is we are building this squad you jump on this ship and come with us or you you just piss off yeah i think yeah you you know you look at you look at some of the players that we have got still in contract and there's probably not many of them that won't do well in league one i mean when sam cosgrove scoring two in the playoff semi-final <laughs> you kind of feel like you know what That's even if some of even if some of them are still here we might do okay i don't think tyler roberts <laughs> would i don't think he would be a bad player in league one i'll go as far as saying i probably don't think keshi anderson would be that bad in league one yeah, I agree. Bakuna know, could be more inconsistent in I League One. I don't ever want to see Bakuna in a blue Same. shirt. <laughs> but he probably would be better in League One. He probably would go because, play for another League One club. But you, you got to hope that we sign a right back behind him who is more steadfast. You you can allow these players to have their inconsistencies and have their asterisks next to their name as long as you've got a core, a solid core. And that's what we've lacked all season is that solid core to make up for the 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 downfall of everyone else. I don't think that players like Bielik and Buchanan are, you know, they've got a track record, haven't they, for not wanting to be in League One. I wouldn't even take mm. the gamble. You know, if we wanted to look at holding on to them, I'd loan them out for a season and say, if we don't get promoted, then we'll sell them. Then you can go, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get and, that, if, yeah. and if we do get promoted, then we're having you back because, you know, there's no two be without Bielik this season i know that he's not all you know like you said before no one's had a good season but but there's been there's been moments in games where if you take christian Bielik out of that team you know yeah. we look he was like a, we look like a boys norwich. team oh, he was brilliant yeah, he was brilliant against norwich absolutely brilliant and it's the same it's the same with buchanan you know if he can stay fit he's a fantastic fullback but again what I don't want is to be going into the season thinking, mm, can he be <laughs> can he be asked with League One? You know, yeah. let's just let's just cut to the chase, cut all the bullshit. If you don't like you just said, if you don't want to be here, then you know, 
we'll, we'll ship you off. And yeah. we've we've not got time for stragglers anymore. We're, we've got a we've got to bring in the right people. And if that means that they're not as good technically, but they will work harder for ninety minutes every week, every single Blues fan would prefer that. Yeah. I definitely, mate. Def- definitely, yeah. Tim Paris, I'm it's cool. important for them to for the club to act quickly, and I, and I believe they will based on <laughs> what we've seen in terms of the the manager or managerial merry go round we've had this season. Yeah. That they've got a track record of acting quickly <laughs> from what we've seen so far, and I, and I, I completely agree. I think you you bring them all in for pre season, and you say, right, we are where we are. We're in League One now put your hand up if you don't think you want to play in league one put your hand yeah. up if you think you deserve to be higher up the table and there'll be a lot of them that will say yes yeah well he won't be there he'll be in his car being pulled over somewhere <laughs> like but um but you'll have people like bakuna that probably genuinely believes he's a premier league player you know because some of them will think that so yeah. if you've got players like that that believe they're good enough but are willing to stay then there's a conversation but if straight away at pre-season you've got players that you know don't want to be there get them out straight away whether it be sell yeah. them loan them do whatever you've got to do to get them away from that bring in the new players as quickly as you can because the last thing you want to be doing is getting two or three weeks into the new season and then deadline day or you know the week before the end of the window you suddenly start losing the Belix, buchanan's the players that are going to be important what i'll say about those two i don't know i know you see a lot of it with derby fans at the minute because they're sort of rejoicing in what's happened, aren't they, after the Derby County dying? I got, I got tweeted by so many Derby fans. Like, barely <laughs> any Villa bothered, but Derby were all... I just looked at him and thought, I don't care about Derby. Yeah, <laughs> but I think a lot of them have uh, a lot of them have highlighted the fact that when they went down, Buchanan and Bielik did absolutely everything they could to get away. Yeah. The easy thing to forget at that point is that they were in takeover trouble and they had that Mel Gibson who was causing them all sorts of problems when they went down. They'd had their points deduction. The whole club was up in the air. Mm. And they weren't think, getting paid. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. a totally different situation to, <laughs> yeah. to what we are. We are the polar opposite of that. We know yeah. exactly where we are off the pitch. We know exactly where we want to be. We're starting to put the infrastructure in place. We're trying to create a business model that stops us from just crumbling to nothing. Yeah. And they have been partly responsible for us going into that division in the first place. Yeah. I, uh... I like to think there might be something this time around for them to that thinks we can't do it again, surely. We can't force our way out of a, two separate clubs because we've gone down. Maybe we actually need to take some ownership of this and get us back where we need to be. If um, if I'm honest, Sam, with you now, um, just, just me and you talking like bro to bro, <laughs> at this point, I'm a bit like concerned because like at, at night when it gets dark, I watch a few things. And I, I have some me time and I worry that you're watching me because I've got all this in my notes about to move on to next. So sorry, if there's I'll a camera that. in here, I don't mind, but I want to put on a good show for you. So can you just let me know where in the house it is? Do a, do a left. My only trouble with that, <clears throat> the trouble with that point, and I, I do, I totally agree that, you know, be honest, Derby will never be Birmingham City Rolex, so um it's a different conversation altogether. However, my only concern is, and I've already seen it on Twitter raised about me is it's the player's status internationally that yeah. that it affects. You know, Miyoshi's already said that he's pretty much been told that he can forget about playing for Japan if he's playing in League One. And I know that last year or whenever we did sign Bielik, that part of the reason why he came was, yes, partly because he wasn't getting paid, but also because he was told that he's got no chance of playing for Poland if he's playing in League One. And I know that there's not like, we've not got the tournaments coming up like we did have um, when they moved, but I can't help but feel like when you're in that, environment and being a professional footballer is your normality and that's sort of what the standard that you set for yourself i don't know whether that's something that you'll always sort of look to go and do still Um, want to be knocking on the door don't you yeah i think you know even if there's nothing coming up i'm sure you know be like he probably always wants to pull on the show for poland and i think that the difficulty that we might have is that yes we are going to be the biggest club in the league we're going to 
be savvy. We're going to be able to attract, you know, championship players that wouldn't necessarily play in League One. However, are we? We are definitely operating in a smaller pool of players of yeah. the ones that would still be willing to take that step. And I, at the end of the, if he stays or if he goes, you know, it's up to him. All I would say is if he's staying, he's got to give a hundred percent. And if he's going, if he if he's only going to give ninety nine, then I would just rather him go. And we just yeah. we take the money from him, or we loan him out, or whatever it is. But yeah, I think. So th- this is why I. I... I feel more confident going down now. And I, I'm honestly not all that bothered. I'm very, very angry at the players. I think you, you've done us a disservice this season. You've done yourselves a disservice this season. I think you des- that's exactly what Sam said, nail on the head. You deserve the relegation on your CV for this season. Absolutely. You, you can blame Rooney. You can blame the manager, Mario go round. You can blame upheaval. You can blame Craig Garner. You can blame everyone. But it's on you, players. It is on you. Yeah. But I feel more confident going down with Knighthead than I than a million years of going down with BSHL. Yeah. Because people are talking like this this relegation, and particularly rival fans. And of course, they're going to have their pops, and that's fine. That's like we des- particularly me. I deserve it. Villa fans come at me because I gave you so much shit over the last years, and hat you've just been knocked out of the cup as well. Sorry about that. Um, what was it? Two nil in the end. Boo, oh, know. was it? Oh. God oh, oh. damn, shame. We both won like football this season. Never mind. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, Royal fans can can take the piece. But they're talking like now we're in League One. That's it. We're yeah, a League One club now there forever. Yeah, yeah. And under BSHL, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe you're right because Knighthead certainly wouldn't have bought us. So yeah, maybe you're right. We could have died it, if we went there. Could have like, died. Yeah. Absolutely could have yeah. died. But this ain't that. This ain't that. This, this is this is Blues relegated under Knighthead, which is a whole world away from Blues relegated under the BSHL. I, I was talking to to Cobb, Chris, about Brian after the um the the 10k run. Did I mention I did the 10k run? Have I have I brought that up yet? Or I had no. to do it at one point in the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sent to him after that. Strangely, every like we're all at the fin- finish line. All the Blues fans that ran it, and everyone's buzzing partly because of the run and everything, but just in general, we're talking about the relegation, and no one is massively asked. We're all angry at the players and we're angry about how the season's gone. But no one that I've actually spoke to personally thinks this is it now. We are a League One club now. That's it. Am I being naive, Sam? No, I agree. And and, and social media from, well, I say rival supporters. Like you say, it just seems to be everybody at the minute. Teams that you didn't even realise you had a rivalry with. Uh, reveling in our relegation. And a lot of people are highlighting, oh, you get a 60,000 seat stadium in, in League One. But it's not, it's not reality, though, because what, what you're hoping to find now, and I think it's a blessing in disguise from a supporter number point of view, if you have a couple of seasons in League One, ideally one season, that, that's what we want. We want one yeah. season in League One and to come I'll straight I'll take back two. Up. But let's say you've got, I don't know, people that have got kids or teenagers that could go to the games, but they don't want it because it's boring and everybody moans about it. Let's say you have a season in League One and it does all go to plan and you're winning games and you're winning games comfortably and it looks like you're going to get promoted or, you know, even playoffs, you know, it, maybe it's not completely gone to plan, but you're still within a chance of going up. That's going to bring in football straight away. So we're probably already going to be back up to the numbers that we've had this season on a general game when they're not yeah. pushing it and when they're not trying to sell out. Just you sort of hovering around the 20 to 22,000, generally speaking. If you get promoted, that's going to incre- encourage those fans to maybe get a season ticket or for more yep. of those fans to get a season ticket. So when we're back in the championship, we're probably going to have more fans than what we've got currently. Mm-hmm. So then if you build that momentum, like a lot of teams have done, a couple of seasons when you're just sort of stabilising, then sort of pushing, the same domino effect, more fans, more regular supporters, more season tickets. Before you know it, if we do end up getting into the Premier League in five, six seasons, we could already have double the support of what we've had now. If you yeah. just keep staying in the championship year on, year out and surviving on the last day, it's a lot slower. It's a lot harder to encourage people to come and watch. Absolutely. So this relegation is a perfect opportunity in every sense of the word. I mean, talk about timing in terms of the players going out of contract as well. It feels mm. as though this is the perfect season for us yeah. to sort of take a step and actually move in the direction we want to go, which is strange considering we've dropped to the third tier. It's but it really just, weird. It feels yeah. like it is such a great opportunity now and staying yeah. up you probably keep hold of maybe some of the players that you don't want and you give them another chance Mate, 100%. Now, 
We've been relegated. You Absolutely. just forced us to go down. So if you're not here, get out. <laughs> we'll see who wants to stick around now. Exactly. Yeah. You, you change. You change the whole trajectory, don't you? You, you know. Yeah. But there really hasn't been a better time for us to get relegated. And um, you know, let's say like everything goes according to plan next season, and we get promoted, and we win the league, and we've won. You know. You know, th- thirty-five games. You know, you're coming into the championship riding that wave. You're yeah. not you're not coming into the championship dragging your heels through the door for another relegation scrap. Yes, yeah. you might end up in that, but you're starting the season off in the most positive way, which we haven't had in so long. And yeah. you know, yes, it, you know, it's gonna bring fans through the door. You know, players are gonna want to come and be a part of it. You know, you're not picking up the scraps that nobody else wants. Yeah. And um, you can come in and you can have a real go of it. And it almost means that next season, well, or should I say at the end of next season, if we do get promoted, you know, who knows? People might not fancy us and the pressure might be off. And and then you can really go and have a proper go at it. And um, you might just surprise a few people like you've seen other teams do. Mm. Yeah. So when when people talk about their their favourite Blues moments, they they tend to talk about the League Cup final, the playoff final, all this stuff. For me, always has been, always will be. And there is video footage of me saying this. It's not just copium or whatever. I've said it since the day I picked up a microphone. That 94-95 season. We're in Division 3. We stormed the league, won it by a landslide. I can't remember if it was a landslide. It feels like it was because I was young. I was like eight, I think. Won the league. Went to Wembley, won the auto windscreen shield, Paul Tate, first ever golden goal, took his shirt off, shit on the Villa written on the shirt. I can tell you that in, that journey to Wembley in the back of my dad's car, I, I remember ripping the paper up, the ticker tape, so that when they all ran out, you threw paper and the bloke next to you went, you little shit. All that <laughs> stuff. I remember, I remember standing on the seat for the entire game because Blues fans didn't sit down. I remember having the vast majority of Wembley because it was fucking miles from Carlisle and we could sell it and they couldn't. I, I just remember everything about that season winning it it was fantastic i was eight i didn't care if we were in the premier league i didn't care if we were in the conference i couldn't care less all i cared was am i getting sweets this week mm. <laughs> am i getting sweets are we going to score i couldn't be i couldn't care i could name my start on 11 off the top of my head i knew everything about the players it, it meant something to me maybe adults weren't feeling that but as a kid i was mm. feeling that and that's when i got grouped that's when my generation bought into blues and we weren't playing man united I remember we did <laughs> did play, I can't remember which Premier League team it was, but we got a draw against them in the cup, I think. And that was like, oh, look, we played one of the big boys. But I didn't care that we weren't the big boys. I weren't asked about that because we were winning every week. If we can recreate that now in League One, exactly what, what <clears> you <throat> said, would you rather watch that or relegation limbo again? And you've got to try and drag your kid to watch relegation limbo again? Yeah. No. Give me the league winning season and maybe we won't win it next season. That's fine. And maybe we'll be mid table and that's fine, but we'll pick up more wins than we have this season. And it'll be well, more of a rocking place than it was this season. There's um, there's a member in uh, the North and East Yorkshire OSC who's a season ticket holder and his six year old son's also a season ticket holder. And I think they did 30 odd games this season, both home and away. And of all the away games, that they went to his six-year-old son never saw one win and really i tell you now fair play to the kid because i've been to i went to a couple of games with them and every week he'd be there and he didn't care what the result was he was always ready to go next week mm. and i can guarantee you he is going to have the time of his life next season it, it's cliche as hell but how many times has Wagner said it, Cook said it, Jeremy Dowser, they've all said it. Imagine if we were good. Imagine St Andrews. Imagine these fan parks and imagine us expecting to win. Imagine us good. This is a shit. And look at the fans. Did you see the fan zone on Saturday? No, I was in Digbeth. E- That's some e- random bar that Ivory took me. Every, every, everybody had basically, you know, come to terms with the fact that we were probably going to go down. Um, in front of the cop with the music on they had david davis there you know i know they had the happy hour um for an hour but it was rocking the place i've never seen an atmosphere like it the you know it was a beautiful day which always helps yeah but the atmosphere before the game was 
I've honestly, of all the years that I've I've been to St Andrews, I've never seen it like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I we went down. I, I wonder if my if I've got rose tinted glasses on it because after the game, I went out with with the loads of Blues fans, uh, stayed in town, did the run the next day. A few days later, playing on the pitch at St Andrews. Maybe I'm remember I'm looking at his relegation through. Mark Watson tinted glasses. I understand and appreciate that. I, I, mm. I do get that. And I get that I'm biased in a lot of stuff. I, I'm a moron. I apologise for that. It's just the way God made me. But talking to other fans, they seem similarly optimistic when we should be at our lowest point. And yeah. it's refreshingly awesome. And I can't wait for next season. And like I say, I don't care who we're playing. I'm glad we're not playing Preston and Middlesbrough for once. <laughs> I think what I think what we have to take into consideration is that we have been shit for ten years. They have the, been shit, and the people that have been going can't get any more fed up with what they're watching. Absolutely, and the people that are still going week in week out, uh, and I'm not I'm not trying to discredit anybody else here, and I'm not even saying that you have to go every week because I'm you know I'm not one of those people. But the people that stick around, that that is your that's your core. Like that's the core of our fan group. And if you can stick around and watch us through, you know, the Carson Young and the Dong Ren era, you know, so what if we've got to watch Blues play in League One with Tom Wagner leading us? Do you know what I mean? You know, Bring how it can it be that bad? Yeah, it can't. Yeah, especially if you've got Mowbray in charge as well. Oh. I imagine. Imagine, just, just imagine. I think somebody put it on Twitter the other day saying that league every single team in League One, we are their cup final next season. Yeah. yeah. And we haven't been that for years. No. Like, and no that, no. Probably not in my lifetime of supporting Blues. I don't think I, I've ever been a Blues fan and thought, God, but they're not looking forward to playing us. Yeah. I've never really thought that. It's always our, like, like Nick said earlier, it's a team that comes and goes, oh, we're in terrible form. Thank God we're playing Blues. Thank God we're playing these dicks. Yeah. 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 It will be brilliant. And not only will our lot be up for it, but hopefully the away lot will be up for it. And every ground we go to, they'll be looking to embarrass us because we're going to be arrogant as balls on social media. <laughs> embarrass us. Give me that. And I'll even take some losses there because you know what? It makes you feel fucking alive, boys, yeah. because I haven't felt alive for this club for 10 years now because I'm yeah. sick of it. Start of the seasons are always so good. The start of this season against Leeds, fantastic. And it slowly nosedives. We seem to win the first game of the season always and then it nosedives. Mm. Win, lose or draw next season, it's going to be a uh, laugh. And I'm up for it. And I think I think that how you've just summed it up there is the feeling of probably 75%, 80% of our fan base, which is why it's not been doom and gloom, which yeah. is why when that lad hit the, hit that screamer into the back of the net at the end of the Norwich game, <laughs> it was like it was like he'd just won the league. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was. Yeah. And yeah. you know, don't get me wrong. I think there was a lot of bell ends on the pitch. If you're over the age of 18 and you're on there, then you've probably got yeah. to look at yourself in the mirror. But what I would say is, if there's a group of kids on there that want to make good of a bad situation, just go and enjoy it. Yeah. You know, we're all kids once. It doesn't matter that much, but yeah, it, it can get a bit silly at times. But, um, yeah. you know... I think, I think you've never... only got to look at teams, some teams that are in the Premier League currently, some teams that are always towards the top end of the championship or sort of in and out of the Premier League. At, at some stage, a lot of those teams have had to drop down to League One at some point. Wolves have done it, Leeds have done it, Southampton have done it. There's so many teams, even the likes of, say, Brighton, Brentford, Bournemouth, they've all come from down there. And all yeah. they've done is they've just built a squad lower down, picked up a shit ton of momentum, carried that through into the championship, not stayed there all that long. And they're in the Premier League, and a lot of them have been in there successfully for years. It's just, it's all about momentum. And for 10 years or more, our momentum has been bad, and we've been yep. lucky to we're not get relegated until now. Yep. So, if anything, like I keep saying, perfect opportunity to, to flip that on its head, get rid of the players that have carried you through all that bad momentum, start again, and just try and find a method to, to make a positive momentum for a change. Yeah, L look at Witten. There was one. Um, month a few like four, five, six seasons ago, they had to cancel goal of the month because they didn't score. Like, there the was one season Ronaldo scored more than their <laughs> entire team. Like, that, that's genuine. I've still got the screenshots on my phone to pull out whenever I need to. But that they dropped down, spent a couple of years in the championship. Now, look at them, they've just had the glory of being knocked out of the Mickey Mouse Cup. Yeah. That could be us winning the Mickey Mouse Cup one day. 
But sometimes you, they were in relegation battle limbo for years and years and years. And now yeah. their fans are happier than ever. Maybe not right this current second, but they are happier than ever. Yeah. And sometimes you need to, to have the worst happen so yeah. the best can come out of it. And I, I think that's where we are now. And I hope that's where we are now. And I, I don't want, because I, I feel like this episode has been a hell of a lot more positive than I was expecting it to be. <laughs> but I don't want that to sort of be a whitewash for the disappointment from the players for this season. I no. spent weeks moaning about the players and I'm done with moaning about them. Uh, give me the list of who's leaving and I'll like get in your cars and bugger off. And Sanderson, I'll give you a lift because you can't. Um, go, go, fine, yeah. go. I'm done with moaning about you. I think that's one of the reasons for the excitement as well, because I think the majority of fans are expecting a lot of these players to leave. I think that is part of the excitement. I think there's a part of you thinking, I'm not personally I'm not going to have to watch Bakuna because he probably sees himself better than League One. I'm not going to have to watch Sunich race around like a headless chicken, albeit for the last four games he has actually done well. But yeah. generally speaking, if you look at his what five years of being here, I'm, mm. I'm glad not to have to watch that anymore because there must be better out there. There's so many players that you could look at. I don't really want to see Dembele again because I don't. We can't have players that play well one in ten. You know, there's too many of those. I think you know Hogan's haven't got to see them anymore. You know, there's so many things to be really positive about, and I think again, I think that's just why people just aren't bothered, and that's, that that's is, how it feels. That people aren't huge, bothered either. That is a huge positive, though, not having to see Scott Hogan anymore. <laughs> but um, and, and, Add to that the fun part. Or lines women because they're not going to have to lift their flag up as much when they watch us now. Add, 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 that, add the fan parks to it again yeah. at the club Wednesday night. Uh, the, the cop car park, you can't get on it. It's full oh. of workmen. They're upgrading all the speakers. They're putting speakers in the ceilings of the toilets. That's how, how intricate these think these details are. They're on the roof today. Like they're, they're doing stuff and nothing's stopping what they've said. Their plans are still in place. They're still going ahead. And yes, take the piss we'll have the best ground in league one but you know what we'll have the best ground in league one brilliant excellent yeah. grow the fan base get them in because again the kids don't give a shit who we're playing but they might get a coke at this fancy new bar not that sort yeah. of coke they're too young but you know real coke <laughs> <Too young. laughs> i was but, um you know talking about the improvements just before um north won the alliance cup oh, piss off. i was talking to um <laughs> i was talking to um, one of the leaders of um, Sutton Coldfield OFC, and um, we were just saying about about the ground and the fact that they've announced that we're not staying, and the fact that they've got these huge plans for us to grow into this massive stadium, and the amount of money that they're spending around the place. And I know that it's a hugely privileged position to sit and talk about, but I also know that obviously a lot of people have had the opportunity to do stadium tours and stuff now. But you look at like the home team dressing room now and the things that they've done behind the scenes and the plans that they've announced for all the boxes and the new bars that they're building and things like that. And, you know, whilst it might not be the best facilities in the world at this moment in time, the willingness to spend that money, knowing that in a few years time, we'll just sell the plot abandon it. Yeah. To, yeah. To, for it to be knocked down to rubble yeah. is how can you i don't want to sound like a happy clappy birmingham city fan because oh we're part of an osc and you know we've mm. got to be, spread positive news about the club genuinely how can you not be positive about what's going on at the moment i agree mate i agree and, and this is this isn't me talking as mouthpiece of the club because i'm certainly not the stuff that they tell me off for saying like if anything like certainly not i'm speaking as mark watson stick with us because I think this is worth sticking with. If we were relegated under the BSHL, this would be a very different tone of podcast. Oh. I'd, I'd have Ivory on here probably and Pew moaning the other side. But stick with us because I think this is worth sticking with. And if in four years' time we're still in League One and we're still putting Bakuna out there and still trying to push Scott Hogan into an extra five years now that he's 42, um, <laughs> then fine, come at me. I'm easy to find. Yeah. I'm gobby enough, come at me. But I think this is worth sticking with. And I, I implore people to stick with it because... I, I think this is special still, even with the rele relegation, always makes it more special. Come on, I'll leave. I totally agree. Right, right, we're done. We've we've done an hour. We've done, we've done, we're done, we're done. Unless anything's got anything else, the, the burning issues they want to bring up. No, no. no Nick, no. do you want to brag about the Alliance Cup anymore? Tough. You ain't got time. We're done. We are done. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's it. Thank you very much, everyone out there for watching. Fat lads going gold. Please do like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for coming on, Sam. Thank you very much. 
Thank you for coming on, Nick. Thank you for having me. Thank you for hosting it like a bro, Mark. No problem, yeah, that's what I do. No, no worries. Please do like, share, comment, and subscribe. We will see you probably next week. ta -ra.